In this video, we are going to learn about Fourier's law of heat conduction. So let's start with the brick wall and we know the temperatures of the two sides of the wall are 35 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius for example. We also know the thickness of the wall and we are going to know one more thing about this wall that is the cross-sectional area. Now for a plain wall, the cross-sectional area and the area marked by green which is the surface area are same. So we can use this area and for example we also know this. So if we already know these parameters and you have an idea about Fourier's law then you can calculate the amount of heat that is transferred in the direction marked by the red arrow. So conduction heat transfer from Fourier's law is then given by Q equal to Ka delta T over delta L and we can put out the values of all these numbers for Ka delta T and delta L and calculate to find that the amount of heat that is transferred in this direction marked by red is 170 watts. So Fourier's law actually helps us calculate the amount of heat that is transferred through a material by the mechanism of heat conduction but it has to follow some assumptions. The first assumption is the wall has to be uniform or the material has to be uniform and heat transfer can only be in one direction or it has to be in a single direction and these two words are very important. So if the wall is uniform that means it only has a single material. So if the wall is made of brick it is only made of brick and if it is made of copper then it is only made of copper and not anything else. It does not have anything else. And one directional heat transfer means that in any other direction in 3D you have negligible heat transfer. So if this two things hold then we can write the amount of heat that is transferred Q is proportional to the temperature difference across the wall given by T1 minus T2 and the amount of heat that is transferred is also proportional inversely with the thickness. So the thicker the wall the less the amount of heat transfer and this is why in houses in cold climates we have walls that are thick. Again the amount of heat that is proportional Fourier observed that the amount of heat that is transferred is proportional to the cross-sectional area A. So now we have actually these three relations and we need to combine these to understand that how heat transfer is related to all of them at the same time. So we combine them and write Q is proportional to delta T over L times A and this means there is this sign, this proportionality sign which is marked by green. This sign means the quantities that are in the left and the quantities that are to the right of this sign change in the same ratio or in the same proportion. That's why this sign is called proportionality but we need to remove this sign because this is not an equal sign so this is not actually an equation it's just a relation. It tells us how these parameters are related but from this we actually cannot calculate uh, the amount of heat that has been transferred. So we are going to do something about it. We are going to remove the proportionality sign and we are going to write a constant and put in an equal sign. So we are going to write Q equals K times A times delta T over L where this K is called a constant of proportionality and this constant of proportionality is actually called thermal conductivity and I am going to put a different video on it. But for this moment we are going to see if Fourier's observations hold. So this k can have any positive value other than 0 and say for example k is 100 then we can see that if you increase a or delta t then your heat transfer will increase and if you increase l then heat transfer is going to decrease. So we are still seeing that Fourier's observation hold even we remove the proportionality sign and put in a constant. So now let's see in a great detail in a little bit more detail that what does this constant of proportionality mean. So this K, this is actually called thermal conductivity and it is a property of a material. And to better understand it, we are going to change side and write K equals Q times L divided by A and also divided by the temperature difference. So we just change the side. So now K can be better defined 
And in order to define it, we are going to create a new wall. That wall has some characteristics associated with it. So it has unit length, so L would be 1 meter. And that wall would have unit cross-sectional area, so 1 meter squared. And it would have a unit temperature difference across the walls, which I'm going to correct in the next slide. And let's draw this new wall. We are going to have the thickness to be 1 meter. We'll also have 1 meter squared cross sectional area. And as we have seen in the previous slide, we're going to have the temperature difference to be 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. It's fine in either way. But we actually are not concerned about the absolute temperature of the site so long the temperature difference is 1 degree Celsius. So it can be 40 and 39 across the walls. So now what is the amount of heat that is transferred through this wall in the direction marked by the red arrow? We are going to measure it experimentally and we are going to put this, all these values in the equation. So let's for example we know that the amount of heat that is transferred is called Q and we put in all the values. Then we are going to leave, be left with Q equal, K equals Q watt per meter times degree Celsius. And this is the unit of K or thermal conductivity. And whatever the value of Q is, will be the value of K, right? So this Q has to be measured experimentally. So now we can actually better define K. So K means it's the amount of heat that is conducted through a material, so by means of lattice vibration and uh, the heat conduction mechanism basically, by a wall that has unit thickness and it also will have to have unit cross-sectional area and of course unit temperature difference across the wall, we already know that. So, so long we have a wall that satisfies this condition, the amount of heat that this particular wall transfers is the amount we call that wall's thermal conductivity or that material's thermal conductivity. So this is how K is understood or K is defined. And as I have uh, told you that this is for better understanding, we call it thermal conductivity. But K is also called transport property because it is associated with transfer of heat. So it is a transport property of the wall material. So for whichever material you use, you have to know the amount of heat that the material is capable to transfer, that the material has a natural ability to transfer. So that's why K is a measure of how well a material conducts heat and we call it a measure of conductivity or we call it thermal conductivity, which, which has an unit and the unit is watt per meter degree Celsius or if you are using Kelvin as unit of temperature, watt per meter Kelvin. So this is a very uh, important property and we already know or understand that different material has to have a different value for it because different materials conduct different amount of heat. So let's take three materials. For example, we take a brick wall, we take a glass wall and we take a copper wall and we are going to try and measure what is the amount of heat that each of them transfers. So if you look at the thermal conductivity or K value, you are going to see a brick wall will transfer 1.7 watt. A glass wall will transfer 1.4 watt and copper is very conductive thermally so it's going to transfer 401 watts. But it has to have a unit of watt per meter degree Celsius because it's the value of thermal conductivity. So this means all these walls have to have the same unit parameters associated with them. So their length has to be 1 meter, their A has to be 1 meter squared, their delta T has to be 1 degree Celsius or 1 degree Kelvin or 1 Kelvin. So they all have to be same. When they are same, then you can compare how much heat is conducted by different materials. So thermal conductivity depends on the type of material. It depends on also temperature. That's the absolute temperature of the wall, not its size and some other parameters, which we are going to see in another video. But for this video, just remember the type of material and temperature are two things. The thermal conductivity depends on. And uh, please also check out my thermal conductivity video, which I'm going to link here. So now let's summarize Fourier's law. It quantifies the conduction heat transfer, so 
not the other amount of heat transfer by other mechanism like convection or radiation and it has a formula mathematically it's written q equals k times a times delta t over l sometimes we use another expression q equal to k a t1 minus t2 over l and there is a condition associated with it t1 has to be greater than t2 because we know heat is always transferred from higher temperature to lower temperature and this expression marked by green is very convenient to use in many situations now let's see how much heat is transferred through this wall that we saw earlier in this video we want to find out what is the heat transfer in the direction marked by the red arrow and we are going to identify different parameters associated with this wall so we need to know the higher temperature t1 which is 35 degrees celsius and the lower temperature t2 is 15 degrees celsius the cross-sectional area a is 2.5 meter squared and the thickness l is half meter and the wall is made of brick so we know that k is 1.7 watt per meter degree celsius and you can get this value from the internet or from any heat transfer book or from a table in the materials handbook or reference kind of book so if you know this then we can use Fourier's law to solve the amount of heat transfer because it satisfies all the assumptions and we can write q equals k a delta t over l we are going to put in the values but before that we are going to use the other expression k a t1 minus t2 so we know that heat has to transfer from the higher temperature to the lower temperature t2 so you can use this form so we are going to put all the values for each of these parameters and we are going to find out what is the amount of heat transfer so we are going to write 0.7 times 2.5 times uh, 40 and we find that the heat transfer is 170 watt and this is the answer of this problem it's a very simple problem so let's make it a bit complicated to see uh, how Fourier's observations work so let's make the wall a bit thicker so we are going to increase thickness by a factor of 4 so now L is 2 meter so instead of being half meter now it's 2 so we are going to fix our calculation it changes 0.5 to 2 so from Fourier's law now the heat transfer should decrease and not only it should decrease it should decrease by a factor of 4 so remember that initially heat transfer uh, value was uh, 170 watt that we calculated and now if you calculate you'd find that this value is 42.5 watts so yes indeed the amount of heat transfer has decreased by a factor of 4 because we have made the wall thicker we have introduced more uh, resistance in the path of heat to be transferred and for this reason the amount of heat transfer has decreased so now let's restore our original problem so in our original problem we had l equals 0.5 meter so we're going to bring back that calculation again and now we're going to change something else to again gain some more uh, insight about Fourier's law so we are going to change the cross-sectional area it was 2.5 meter squared but we are going to double this to 5 meter squared and then we're going to see if the transfer doubles so we should find out it transfer it's now 340 watt so we are going to put in all the values and calculate and voila we find the amount of heat transfer is 340 watts so again when you increase the cross-sectional area now you have more molecules to initiate the lattice vibration for more heat to be transferred or to propagate the vibrations much more easily compared to a smaller cross-sectional area that was available so again we're going to restore our original problem and we're going to write a equals 2.5 meters squared again and we're going to fix our equation again so this time instead of having a brick to make the wall we are going to use copper and why are we going to use copper uh, simple reason because we want to increase the amount of heat transfer and we have already seen that copper has a very high k value or thermal conductivity value and for copper that value is 401 watt per meter degree celsius so we are increasing it by almost like 300 or 350 times so the heat transfer would be much larger so let's put this value and run these numbers and we're going to find the amount of heat transfer is 
pretty huge it's 20,050 watts so 20 kilowatt so that's really a lot of heat transfer and it's the same wall it has the same dimension but we have only only just changed the material so why is such a high amount of heat is being transferred the reason is because copper conducts a lot of heat it's it's copper's ability because of its molecular structure and properties that it can transfer a lot of heat so we are again going to restore our original problem to change something else so we have changed pretty much every parameter but we have not changed the temperature of the sides of the wall so we are going to change this 35 degrees celsius or this 15 degrees celsius value but uh, let's make it a bit easier so we are going to keep the 15 degrees celsius as 15 but we are going to increase the temperature on the left side or the higher temperature value t1 we are going to increase it to 100 so now from instinct or from experience we know more heat has to be transferred compared to our original problem where we had 170 watt of heat transferred and why is that because you need more heat that the material has to release for the temperature from one side to decrease to 15 degrees celsius so now let's summarize Fourier's law the conduction heat transfer that Fourier's law quantifies it depends on the temperature difference it depends on the cross-sectional area it also depends on the uh, thickness of the material so the thicker the material the less amount of heat will be transferred and it also depends on the thermal conductivity and we have expression for Fourier's law is q equals k a delta t over l this is a very simple expression there are other expression from calculus that are much more useful but from this we can easily calculate the amount of heat that has been transferred so if you have liked this video please put in a like if you enjoyed the content share it comment on it and also subscribe to my channel